Good morning, I'm here at Chesahawitska Campground River Shore? I don't know, it's a parking lot for boats to get on and off. But today we're gonna hike this creek here and we're gonna go to the crack. I heard that was good. Um, I was doing a live stream with Tony from Random Adventures 2.0 and people were saying I should go there. And I was gonna go there anyway, so yeah, sure. And I'm gonna check out some of the other springs here, and paddle out a little and come back. I was gonna wait till tomorrow to do this, but it's supposed to rain and some thunderstorms during the day, so not the best when you're out in the water. So let's get going and uh, see you out in the water. I'm out on the water. Oops, there's a boat coming. I'm gonna have to uh, oh, get out of their way. All right, I'm out on the water. There's a boat coming down the boat ramp to the right of me. Be careful. But uh, the water's pretty clear. There was actually a manatee right by the boardwalk here. I uh, just came by to just pay for the campsite or just check in at the campsite. And there it was. But we have a, quite a bit of paddling to do today. We're gonna go left first and let's check out the crack area. And then we'll come back and we'll check out these little springs here that aren't too far. Let's, let's get moving here. There are so many big birds here. It's shocking made to turn into the crack. It's a long creek. It looks really shallow. I'm gonna have to paddle. I'm starting to float back out because of the current coming down. It's supposed to be able to paddle this. I hope it's not too shallow. <laughs> I know this kayak can go pretty shallow except rocks. Gotta pay attention to the rocks. When you put your paddle in, you can only go so far. Wish me luck, folks. I think I'm stuck. I can't seem to uh, keep going. It's too shallow. I might have to get out and actually carry it for, until it gets to the next deeper spot. But this is a nice, like, well, it's not nice. It's a really wide section, but I'm stuck. Can't get any further. I keep hitting the ground. Looks too shallow. Is this it? The creek has come to this deep lagoon area with little branches. I went one way and it's just got way too shallow and I checked the map and I guess it should be towards the right somewhere. Um, looks really overgrown too. I don't know if that's the right way. Let's go check it out. Right here it's really deep and green. It's pretty wild. Let's take a look under the water. I think that may be it there. It's like it barely squeezes the kayak in. I'm gonna go in and see, look around for footprints and any kind of docking mark because it looks like no other boats get dragged onto shore and I see no footprints. It can't be it, but that's the most likely spot of everything I've seen here. The way I went the first time was the right way, and I'm going now. It's getting shallower and shallower, and three guys just paddled by. This is the way I knew. This is definitely the way I heard voices, and they told me it's this way. But they told me I will have to drag it forward because it gets much shallower, but there's nobody else there, supposedly. Now to look for kayak marks on the shore somewhere. I guess I just keep going upstream as much as I can.
quite funny you could see the scratch marks from the other kayaks. This one doesn't have a keel, but most kayaks do. So those would be the first to hit the ground. I think we can go a little bit more. I was going to get out, but I realized that I tied the selfie stick to the kayak, so I can't get out with the selfie stick. Let's untie it here. I think I went much further than most people. I saw a bunch of footprints on the side. And because, like I said, I don't have like a skip on the bottom, I can go a little further. I did hit some logs, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to check the bottom of this kayak to see how it held up. They were soft rocks, it didn't feel sharp, but you could feel it kind of like bending the bottom of the boat. You could feel a bump. Um, on a hard kayak, you probably wouldn't feel it, you just feel a bump, but you could feel it like. <clears throat> but there is a rubber plane on the bottom. I think you could order a skiff, and that's where you attach it. I hope that's still intact. We'll see, but this is how you test the kayak. Um, let me get this rope out so I can pull this a little easier. It's a pretty cool little, I don't know what you call it, lagoon at the end of a creek. I couldn't even drag a kayak anymore. It got so shallow, so I just kind of tied it up to the stump. I dragged it out there. Hopefully that's sufficient enough to hold it. I have a feeling if a big wave came, it would yank the rope up, but I think it'll be okay because there's going to be nothing that can make waves here because it's so shallow. We'll definitely have to check out the bottom of the kayak once we are done. It seems asymmetrical, isn't it? The folds are asymmetrical though. I think it continues this way to the crack though, so we'll just keep walking this. I don't see any footprints or anything. I heard you just follow the stream. I don't see any signs. Shouldn't be too hard to hard to get there I think. oh like quicksand around here <laughs> I'm gonna lose my flip-flops oh crap I did lose my flip-flops oh. holy crap oh no my flip-flops broke oh that's a shame. This is the crack. I don't know if you can see it too well. Let's get a little bit closer. My pants are already wet, so I guess I can go a little deeper. What's your fish? It's just a big crack in the ground. That's where the spring water is coming from. Look at all the fish in there. I'm just carrying both flip-flops for now because one's broken and it's easier to walk without flip-flops. Caused a lot of resistance. But I'm gonna head back to the kayak and just take my time going back. It's only 1041. Got plenty of time in the day. I'm gonna explore a couple of other springs up here. And then they're really close to the, to the dock. So I'm just gonna take my time. Look how close the kayak is. I'm right there. This is where my shoe sank in and I lost the, I broke the strap on my flip-flops. So it's kind of like muddy, murky muddy. I don't know which way is the best way to go. I might uh, try to walk on these logs as best I can all the way across and then go to the left and hope it's not too murky over there. Oh, see, oh gosh. <laughs> oh man, it's so much easier without flip flops or any kind of footwear. Shouldn't have done that. I'm stuck. I see footsteps out here. 
I'm guessing they started dragging their kayaks after this or they parked it and just kind of walked to rest but it does get a little deeper for a short bit so I'm glad I didn't do that but if you have a, a little skip thing on the bottom you're gonna get caught on a whole bunch of things fortunately this this kayak is very flat now it's kind of able to just go over some of the logs they were really mossy covered and they just kind of I give it the old hip thrust hopefully kayak held up we'll see how it held up I mean that's what everyone's major concern is probably about these kayaks in fact that's my concern why I'm not going to use this in the Everglades because you know when I don't know how durable it is will it ever string a spring a leak in the folds because th those are the weak spots I really want to figure it out but so far the crack has been a challenge the wind's been coming downwind fortunately or unfortunately so I've had to paddle extremely hard just to fight the wind as well as the current in some spots like it's super gentle here but some parts gets a little faster and if you want to hit the deeper spots so you can paddle you wind up having to fight more current but now that we're going down it's like super calm pace really nice I just have to look for shallow spots oh I just got stuck up on a log I didn't even see it. <laughs> I saw a little bit of grime on my legs, so I thought I'd give it a shot trying to wash my legs in the water. It's actually easy to stick one foot in. I think if you stick the other foot in, you're going to have to be kind of flexible because it's a very wide kayak, so it's hard to get both feet. It won't be comfortable at all. But one leg at a time, and it's stable enough, works pretty well. Definitely can't get two. Oh god! If you try two legs, you're not going to be able to get both in the water because just like this. Guess it's comfortable. Oh, there's a fish over there with uh, some chunks missing out of the top, like paint marks. I wonder if something took a bite out of it. Stream is to gently just float downstream. Just paddle enough to avoid obstacles and uh, turn and look at things. You have more time to look at things. Like, is that a rock or a manatee? No, it's just more rocks. But there are a couple manatees around here on the right, I think. Someone just told me. But nice, gentle float down. It's really nice. Some rapids. Ooh. Ooh. Made it without scraping anything. I'm stuck again, so I can drag this. There's not really a handle on this one. 
just gotta kind of bend over. This section is really shallow. I guess, I don't know if I made it, if I went to the right, maybe I could have made it. I don't know. I doubt it. It's really wide and it's just extremely shallow. A little further, I think we can get back in. It's actually starting to get deeper already. Yeah, I think we're good. really shallow there's some logs or something I can't avoid lean forward kind of even out the boat I'll zoom in as much as I can but there's a little raccoon over there at the edge of the water digging around in the mud he's a little guy that's what they should be doing not digging around in garbage came out here I just wanted to paddle around at least one of the islands and just kind of get a feel of what might be around like a raccoon in fact that's an island right there so he's on an island I guess they could swim but I'm gonna head back the problem is it's gonna be up river and the wind is coming from that direction every once in a while quite strong there is a beach on the left I think it's a campsite I might go there just to take a break from all the paddling because it's gonna be a bunch of work well, I'll probably see you back at the dock and then we'll check out the other springs which are right there. Can you even see that black bird with the white stripes on its wings? Just beautiful. Man. There are just so many birds around here. Super stable, even with the side wind, side winds.
I wonder if the front screen of my GoPro died. It's been in the water a lot lately. Got my kayak laid out. I'm just gonna let it air dry. A little bit of sun here and there, but I'll try to dry it out as much as I can. Tomorrow I'm not gonna go kayaking. I'm gonna go to Homosasa Spring State Park and do a little tour there. I'm gonna take the boat tour. Um, it's like a river cruise, except you ride in a boat instead of kayaking. So I'm trying to dry it out as much as I can now while I'm here. And I'm gonna lay it out um, until about when it's supposed to start raining. The mosquitoes are bad here. It's like January 23rd, 4th? I forget the date, but mosquitoes are bad. So uh, if you come down here, even in late January, be prepared. Here at Chata Hanuti. I don't know, I'll never remember that. Okay, I am gonna shower because I am, I've been sweating and I've been wet and I wore this shirt yesterday as well. And I'm kind of stinky a little. So time to go shower, come back, relax, maybe go shower again later before I go to sleep. Lou the Hippo, who is legally a Florida resident, celebrated his 64th birthday today, which is amazing since hippos in captivity usually live only to about 60. He is the oldest hippo in captivity. Sadly, these are still the only flamingos I have seen, and thankfully, none of these birds lived anywhere near my campsites. Many of the birds here have just one wing, one leg, or one eye. Normally, I don't like zoos, but almost all the animals at Homosasa State Park cannot survive on their own in the wild, so they serve as ambassadors to educate visitors about how they came about living here. <laughs> 